In this video, we're going to get Apollo set up with Pro Tools. Before we get into it, be sure that Apollo software is installed. Once everything is installed, make sure that Apollo is powered on and connected to the computer. After Pro Tools is loaded, we're going to want to load the Apollo driver. We do this in the Playback Engine dialog. At the very top of the window, there is a pop-up menu. Click it and select Universal Audio Apollo. If we have a session already loaded, Pro Tools will need to reload the session. In addition to loading the driver, the Playback Engine window is also where we set the I.O. buffer size. It is common to set the buffer low while recording and setting it high when mixing. But if we use Apollo's console application, low buffers are less important because the console application handles low latency monitoring and recording duties. Low buffers typically put more strain on the computer's resources. So for mixing, it's a good idea to have the buffer set high so that the computer has more horsepower to dedicate to the mixing engine. We can change the I.O. buffer size in Pro Tools by selecting an option from the pop-up menu. To get the lowest latency of plugins running inside Pro Tools, we would set this lower, provided we have enough computer horsepower to do so. While setting a higher buffer does increase the internal mixing latency, automatic delay compensation will compensate for any delays in the mixer. New in Pro Tools 10, there is a larger delay compensation value called Maximum, which is great for handling the inherent delays in the Pro Tools mixer when using Apollo as a plug-in DSP accelerator. Now that Apollo's driver is loaded, Pro Tools will automatically set the sample rate of Apollo whenever we open a session. If we want to set the clock source for Apollo, we will need to open the console application's settings panel. We can launch it directly from Pro Tools by going to the setup menu and selecting hardware. There we can select launch setup app where we can set the clock source. Now we only need to do this if we want to set the clock source to something other than internal, like word clock for example. Apollo's driver will provide the correct names of all of the inputs and outputs to Pro Tools, but we may need to go into the I.O. setup and get things showing up the way we want. If we have a Pro Tools session that was created with a different interface, the I.O. setup will try and remap Apollo using the old names of the previous interface, so we may want to modify that. The dedicated monitor outputs of Apollo are the 1-2 outputs of the interface, so most of the time a Pro Tools session will automatically play out of these outputs. We can use the Pro Tools mixer to address any of Apollo's other analog or digital outputs, including the headphone outputs. The inputs of Apollo can be easily routed to any track. Again, just make sure that all of the inputs are assigned in the I.O. setup of Pro Tools. To take advantage of Apollo's real-time UAD processing, the console application gives us a powerful tracking interface with front-end processing. We can launch the console from the application icon, or there is a convenient UA icon found in the Finder menu. Click it and select Console. Routing for the console is very intuitive. It was designed to emulate the workflow of plugging a hardware console into an audio interface. But in this case, it's all inside of Apollo's hardware and DSP. We never have to get into any kind of router or matrix interface to get inputs routed. Inputs are always virtually hooked up to the track's input path assign, so we will always hear sound. Unless, of course, the console's fader is pulled down or muted. When record enabling tracks, it is common to hear the console application's low latency path and the Pro Tools software monitor path at the same time. To avoid hearing a signal twice, we either want to mute the track or use the new low latency monitoring feature in Pro Tools 10. This automatically mutes the Pro Tools software monitor path, so we can just use the console application instead. This ensures that latency is not an issue and the hardware buffer setting no longer applies to monitoring latency because the console allows us to hear the input in real time along with any pre-existing tracks in Pro Tools. Just remember that this is a mode and you will want to turn it off when you are done tracking because this mode will disable any sends and inserts on the record enabled tracks. Another powerful application for Apollo is the console recall plugin. In addition to giving us access to Apollo's monitor features from within the DAW, it also gives us the ability to completely recall the settings of the console application. All we need to do is check the sync button and now anytime we hit save in Pro Tools, the console recall plugin will store the settings of the console app with the Pro Tools session. This ensures that we can open a session months or years down the line and our tracking front end will be completely recalled. Of course, Apollo works just like existing U82 DSP accelerators, whereby we can load up any of the U82 powered plugins and they run off of Apollo's DSP. What's nice is that we can run plugins inside Pro Tools and have plugins running in the console application simultaneously. So whether we are tracking, mixing, or mastering, Apollo provides the sound quality, low latency performance, and power for all phases of audio production.